हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी काइंडली सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल इफ़ यू हैवन सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल येट नाउ लेट्स सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम इन दिस प्रॉब्लम वी आर गिवन दैट डिटरमाइन द स्ट्रेच इन ईच स्प्रिंग फॉर इक्विलिब्रियम ऑफ टू के जी ब्लॉक द स्प्रिंग्स आर शोन इन द इक्विलिब्रियम पोजिशन राइट सो वी हैव टू फाइंड द एलोंगेशन इन ईच ऑफ दीज थ्री स्प्रिंग्स राइट सो नाउ एज वी कैन सी दैट the force applied at this point d will be equal to the weight of this block right so let me represent that weight right here so we will have the weight will be acting vertically downward and this weight will be equal to 2 into 9.81 and as a reaction this spring force will apply the same force in the opposite direction right so this spring will apply the force in the upward direction right and similarly uh, this spring will apply the same force at this point a in the opposite direction that is vertically downward right so we will have this same force which will be acting vertically downward right so this means that this spring force ad this the force in this spring which is ad spring right so this will be equal to the weight of that box right and that is 2 into 9.81 right and as we know that the spring force is given by by this equation f is equal to k delta right so this delta is the elongation or we can say that kx right so x is the elongation in the spring right so now if you want to find the elongation in this ad spring so then we can write that f ad will be equal to kad that is the stiffness of this particular spring multiply by the elongation of this same spring right x ad so now x ad the elongation in the ad spring will be equal to f ad divided by kad so fad is equal to the weight of the box so then this will be 2 into 9.81 divided by kad so kad is how much so it is 40 so we will divide this by 40 so xad equals to 0.4905 newton per meter right now as we can see that this spring will apply the force in this direction right so we can represent the spring force fab so that will be acting in this direction right and similarly there will be a spring force fac which will be acting in this direction at this particular point a right and now if i draw a horizontal line here so then this f ab force will be acting at some angle and let's say that there this angle is theta right and similarly this uh, fac force will be making some angle and let's say that this angle is alpha right so we can find this theta and alpha angles by using these dimensions right so now as we can see that this length is 4 and this height or uh, this length is 3 meters right so if this is theta so then this angle is also theta right so we can use this triangle to find this theta right so if i draw this triangle here so we have this triangle right this length is 4 this is 3 and this is theta so if we apply the pythagoras theorem so we can find this hypotenuse length right so if we apply uh, let's say that this hypotenuse is let's say p right so then it will be p square equal to 3 square plus 4 square and this p will be equal to 3 square plus 4 square under the root 2 so then this will give us 5 right so this means that the hypotenuse of this triangle is equal to 5 right similarly we can uh, find this alpha angle by using this triangle as well right so if i draw this triangle here so we will have this triangle this length is 3 and this length is 3 also right so we can find the hypotenuse let's say that the hypotenuse is h So again if we apply the Pythagoras theorem so then h will be equal to 3 square plus 3 square under the root So the hypotenuse of that triangle is equal to 4.24 right so this is 4.24 and this is our angle alpha right so now if we apply the equilibrium condition at point A let's say that if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0 and if we resolve these forces into its components right so this fab will have one component which will be acting vertically upward similarly this fac will have one component which will be acting vertically upward right and this component will be the sine component right so we can write that this will be fab sine of theta 
and similarly this will be f a c sine of alpha and similarly this f a b will have one component in this direction and this will be the cos component so we can write that this will be f a b cos of theta and this will be the cos component of this force so this will be f a c cos of alpha so now if we apply the summation of forces along y so we can write that this will be f a b sine of theta which will which is acting upward right so we can write that this is plus and let's say that this is our positive x and positive y direction right so this is in the positive y direction so we will write plus f a b sine of theta right and sine of theta from this triangle will be equal to perpendicular divided by hypotenuse right so we can write that the perpendicular is 3 and hypotenuse is 5 right similarly this f a c sine of alpha is acting in the positive y direction so again we will write plus f a c and now sine of alpha so now from this triangle we can say that sine of alpha is 3 divided by hypotenuse right so it is 3 divided by 4.25 right so we will write 3 divided by 4.25 and similarly the weight is acting vertically downward so we will write minus or uh, this f a d is acting vertically downward right so this is the weight of that box right so minus 2 into 9.81 and this will be equal to 0 and let's say this is equation 1 right so in this equation we have two unknowns right so now if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 so as we can see that this cos component is acting in the positive x direction so i will write plus f a b cos of theta and from this triangle cos of theta is 4 divided by 5 right so we will write 4 divided by 5 similarly this is acting in the negative x direction so i will write minus f a c and this is cos of alpha right so cos of alpha is again we will use this triangle so cos of alpha from this triangle is 3 divided by 4.25 right so base divided by hypotenuse and this will be equal to 0 right so from this we can get f a b in terms of f a c right so we can write that f a b equals to plus f a c 3 into 4.25 and we can cross multiply this right so this will be 5 divided by 4 so from this equation we get fab in terms of fac so fab is equal to 0.882 fac right so now we will substitute this fab in equation 1 right so we can write that this will be 0 0.882 fab plus sorry this will be f a c right so 0 0.882 f a c plus f a c 3 divided by 4.25 minus 2 into 9.81 and this will be equal to 0 and if we take f a c common from this so then we will have f a c and this will be 0 0.882 into 3 divided by 5 plus 3 divided by 4.25 and we can bring this to the other side of equation right so this will be equal to 2 into 9.81 now when we solve this equation so f a c equals to 15.88 newtons right and if we represent the spring force f a c in terms of the stiffness right so this will be k a c x a c equals to 5 15.88 newtons right so the elongation in this x a c spring will be equal to 15.88 divided by its spring constant right so k a c is 20 so we will divide this by 20 so this will give us the elongation in a c spring and similarly if we substitute this f a c value in this equation 2 so then f a b will be equal to 0 0.882 into f a c which is 15.88 so this equals to 14.01 newtons and similarly we can find the elongation in this same spring as well f a b 
so if we represent this f a b in terms of k a b x a b and if this is equal to 14.01 so the elongation in a b spring will be equal to 14.01 divided by its spring constant right k a b so k a b is given this is 30 So the elongation in XAB comes out to be 0.467 meters and the elongation in AC spring is equal to 0.794 meter, right? So this is the solution of this particular problem.